given a non-empty array of positive integers, determine if the array can be divided into two subsets so that the sum of both subsets is equal. And this is what it looks like. So we have this, can we divide it in a way that both, both, two, both parts, are, parts are equal? Yes, one, three, three, and seven. So one plus three plus three, sum up to seven. Uh, in this case, there is no way we can do that, what we just did. And here, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 5 is the same with 11. So we can divide it into two subsets such that both halves are equal. And here we have 1 and 20 and 6, 7, and 8. Okay? Now this problem builds on a knapsack problem with a catch. And that is, for every thing we're looking for, every subset's half we're looking for, we must realize that for, for that to be possible, for them to be divided into two equal subsets, right? Every single thing here, for instance, should sum up to an even number because only even numbers are, divide, are divisible by two evenly. Um, so that's something important to note. And it takes, it follows the traditional knapsack approach. And this is the code that does it. Uh, there, are, there are two versions of this code. There is a version that uses a two dimensional table and a version that uses a one dimensional table. This is the version that uses a two dimensional table. And you can see here that we are calculating the sum of the array first of all, and we're checking if that sum is divisible by two neatly. If it isn't, then just return false. This cannot be partitioned uh, into two equal sub sub subset arrays. Next, uh, we want to calculate the subset sum. So we only need half. We only need to find a subset of the array that is equal to half of the sum that we just computed, right, to get the answer for this, right? We don't need to calculate the, oh, check if it, oh, I got these numbers. Now let me confirm if these other, other numbers work. No, you don't, because if you just carry it across the equal sign operator, right, because they sum up to the total. So if you take half and it's an even number, then the other half that you didn't compute should uh, tally. But that's not too confusing. And then here we are creating the two-dimensional array. So it's a DP table and we fill it with everything with false, so a two-dimensional array, first with the numbers, like in the array, and then for e, for for the subset sum, we create an array with the subset sum, and um, iterate through that with the for loop. Next, we initialize the first row to true, and what does that mean? What this table says is, okay, assuming, and the way it's similar to the knapsack problem, only that, in this case, we're saying, oh, if the sum was zero, right? The truth is there is a subset for every, every single combination has a subset where it's going to be a sum up to zero. That's the empty set, right? The empty set is always going to sum up to zero. The empty set is a subset of every single set. That's something to know. Um, and another thing, we put false here because there's no way an empty set can sum up to one or two or three or four, right? Four is the total. Um, is the total for this half of the sum of this, right? That, so that's why it goes up to four here. And we have four faces here because including the empty set, right? There are three elements in the array, okay? Next, so we fill that with true, right? As you can see here, we fill this with true. Um, then everything here is false, right? Um, but again, we already initialized every single thing to false, so we don't need to set it again, especially. Then we fill up the table in the bottom up manner. So we loop through everything up to the subset sum. And for j up to the length, the sum of the lengths, because our goal is to populate this entire table. And then basically we say, okay, for this number, is the number bigger than i? Right. So if this number is bigger than i, this branch represents us not picking that number. So for instance, if um, I'm at 4 here, right, is 4 bigger than 1, right? Um, which is true, so it cannot fit in one, right? There's no combination where we're evaluating only four in the array, and we are checking if it will fit if if the sum was one. There's no way, there's just no way. So if there's no way, we skip it. That's what basically this does, right? It sets that i and j to what it was previously, the previous j, so the previous column. Uh, in, in this case, which is false, right? We're just setting this to false, as you can see here, right here. Um, so it just sets it to what it was before, over here, the same same row, the previous column, set it to false. That's what this branch does. Otherwise, okay, we're saying, okay, what happens, it can fit, but then even though it can fit, we need to check what happens if we pick it and what happens if we don't. 
And that's what this branch evaluates, right? In, in the standard knapsack problem. And you can go back to the previous videos to see where I dealt with that. It's not up to five videos ago in the past. And so you can see the same pattern here, right? Where we pick, we just pick what was there prior. And then this other pattern where, okay, we are including it. And because we're including it, we're subtracting it from the summary evaluated. And that this is what that looks like um, in the code. So yeah, standard knapsack pattern. This is something you might internalize, right? And not always have like available to you uh, intuitively, but this is how we, do that and again it follows from the coin change problem the iterative solution to the coin change problem and also the knapsack problem so it's a common pattern and then when we're done we just return the value in the last box Tiffany, that's all now there is an optimized single array approach i don't have a diagram for that but it's basically doing this without um without being as verbose uh, so it looks like this Feel free to step through this with your debugger in your own time, but this is the end of this video. And let us look at the time complexity discussion before we go away. And the time complexity for this method is uh, O of n by s, where n is the size of the input array, s is the size of the, is the sum of the array. Okay? And then the other one, the space complexity is n by s as well, like in the workspace. Now, of course, you can improve the space complexity with a single array, uh, but we're not dealing with that in this video. Uh, it's also worth noting, the lead code says the previous video, the solution to previous video, the memoir solution, the recursive memoir memoi solution, typically on average gives the better performance. And that's all you need to know. Cheers.